they'll be blocked by the big carriers. You know, when the carriers, especially in these days, if they start um, becoming part of the content suppliers, you, you think they're going to be fair, you know, and, and let, you know, if they really had no regulation at all, if they had no worry about it, no, they wouldn't block you from getting Netflix, so you'd have to watch their movie channels. Uh, uh, every, every, you know, every normal person in the United States knows this. How about app stores? I thought it was sort of interesting with the wireless bureau chief said about app stores and how one can block applications. I didn't understand exactly what what was being done regarding app stores. Um, I, you know, I, I'm for the maximum openness, and that's not necessarily everything's going on. I know that in Apple's case, though, they've made some major. Um, I don't know what adjustments in recent times, allowing apps like Google Voice that they didn't before, and I felt very good about that. You went herd investment or was it investment? We heard both. We heard both sides. Herd investment or um, they, they they made a, a case with very minor examples that I can't relate to. That oh, disclosing, being transparent about our network is going to keep people from oh, it's too much work, it's too much overhead, we can't get the investment money to expand our network. What are you talking about? I, I've been a network administrator. Every network administrator has has instantly the printouts of all of their network connections and data and figuring, and it's not very um, difficult to publicize that. It's not an impediment. Um, I believe that um, protecting consumers is good. I'd, I'd like the companies to get on. I wish they could go further. I wish they could guarantee broadband to every American. But will, did the rules go far enough? Did the rules go far enough in, prote in protecting them? No, No, I don't think the rules went far enough in protecting individuals, but I tend to be very much on the side of the small guy, you know, being taken advantage of by the big guy. I feel sorry about that. I feel emotional about that. And I've been in that side of things many, many times in my life. I have many stories that would match. I forget who the majority um, guy was that read first. Cops. Cops. Uh, what, yeah, what Mr. Cops said, almost every key aspect of how people get taken advantage of has happened to me in my personal life, in my home, with my internet, with my devices. Oh, yeah. so I, I, wrote, I wrote a letter to all the commissioners and sent it out to them. And um, I wrote it. What I did is I woke up. Yesterday, more, yesterday around 10, I jumped out of bed with ideas in my head. I sat down on my knees. I knew this issue was coming up, and I typed as fast as I could type. I typed my letter of thoughts about it and mailed it to the commissioners. I, then, I, then I got an airplane. I, I called and got a, a flight, you know, two hours later, and I'm an hour from the airport. So, uh, so I just decided to come here on an, because I was emotionally attached. This is a very significant, important issue, internet freedom, and I don't think that was far enough. I think, I think, sure, we haven't had a need for it so far. It's worked in an open system. We're getting very close to a point where it could be closed off in ways that you wouldn't know how it's closed off. It was pointed out that, um, oh, the internet is has, has expounded and grown. Yeah, it's grown because technology hit certain points, networking that was possible for cable companies, DSL came about. That's why it expanded. We have huge numbers of jobs. But the United States' place in the world, the FCC, this is a federal commission, our place in the world for broadband has dropped from first to what? I don't know what I read, 27th or something, 6th? Whatever it is, 16, 17, in the world, and it's going down, and that's happened in the last 10 years, like almost every category of, of you know, welfare, education, um, um, economics in our life in this country. So, and I, I, you know what, I, I want to hear a few leaders in this country stand up and say, I am fighting for the people to not be taken advantage of, rather than, well, I'm a lawyer, and this, big, this reads that way, and, and here's, the, here's the requirements, and really, you know, trust the big business. Um, is what happened here today good for Apple? Is it good for Apple? Well, I hope so. I, I, I don't really know. I didn't think about it that way. I'm not. I'm here for myself. I'm not here, here for Apple. Um, I think that uh, Apple is so... Apple is known for being an innovator and a leader. And I don't think anybody would disagree that they're almost the ones who set the tone of where the world goes in technology. So I think that openness favors those companies that have the better products. So I think it's good for Apple. Where'd you come here? Where'd you fly from? I flew from San, roughly San, San Francisco. Okay. What's this? Yeah, I just I hopped on a plane as quick as I rushed and <laughs> got a flight to Baltimore. Right. Oh yeah, I had to run. I had to run just to get here. I decided on a flim on the last minute. I wanted to be here because this date was so significant to my life. I had a ham radio license when I was ten years old. I had the FCC spectrums on my wall in my room. I grew up admiring the FCC is so important. The, the chairman of the FCC to me is more important than the president of the United States. And um, 
it, it, it's been an important part of my life. And the FCC has always sort of had a white hat. It's one of the good things. And this is a case where that hat could go black. And I wish, I mean, I wish they'd gone farther. I'm glad they made the, state, the statement they made. I respectfully disagree with the majority side. I would love to talk to them and chat any time. I respect their views and their opinions, too. But I just don't think they are the ones that speak for the people. I want to believe my government is for the people and helping people who need help and are, and are needy and things like that. And not the government is just to trample over everybody and have the biggest companies succeed more than they have before. How specifically does it not go far enough? How specifically does it not go far enough? Well, and it said, um, well, no discrimination, no unreasonable discrimination was one. Um, I, I, I think you, there's a way to define it as no discrimination if you just find discrimination to include certain things. I would have phrased that one differently. Um, doesn't go far enough. Does not, there will be no blockages, doesn't mean there will be no inhibitions. It wasn't clear what was presented here today to me. If that means you can't really favor one source over another. Because, you know, innovator comes along and they shouldn't have any blocks at all on the internet. To me, the internet, the ISPs should just be providing things like the copper to your house and the gear that puts it onto the internet and step back, get out of the way, don't try to make it go your way, send it what you want. So, so I think it, it did well there. As far as, yeah, I think the wireless is the internet just as much as anything else. It's becoming the more important internet um, to us who are mobile and those principles I think should have been applied to it just the same. Maybe there's a way to phrase it that, well, there's always a way to have certain exceptions when they're called for. I would have said that um, discrimination, I would have defined discrimination as being somebody who is maybe not paying as much money or has as much influence um, will not be, or any service you want will not be slowed down just because another was given preference by paying more money. In other words, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with some services paying more, getting faster delivery, as long as anything you wanted didn't get inhibited. I don't want, the, you know, Google Movies coming through to my house full speed, and I can't. I, yet I can't see a, a video that my brother is sending me from his home. And as written, it's not clear if that would be prohibited. Is that what you're saying? I, I would say. I would say I'm for any. I, I am for some scales of tiers of better service for more money, as long as it doesn't ever cost somebody a lower level of performance, um, what do they call that? Lower quality of service, QOM. Uh, lower quality of service for any of the other items that they have, just to get a better a better service for, for certain ones. Does the um, conditions... But, you know, I, I, I really like, but you know, there are more important issues to me, too. I mean, I wish broadband would come to everyone. There was a point about uh, voice over IP uh, and how that they wanted oh, the connections there. Thing about the, I want to get back to one more thing on the yeah. wireless question. Yeah. Uh -huh. There are a number of countries I've been to, like in the middle, in the, the Eastern Europe and places like that, Slavic Republic, where an awful lot of people, one of the standard ways to get the internet is not over wire, it's over um, wireless, and it's higher speed yeah. than a lot of our wire services, much faster than my home even. And that's their standard internet in the home. So the wireless eventually could just become your way to get the internet in your home. Right now, I can get faster wireless in my home over cellular than I can over wire. And I pay a lot, and I pay 10 times as much as someone pays for DSL just to get a T1 line. You know, lower, lower speed, you know, lower performance and higher cost. And yeah, I, I live, I, that's because I live eight tenths of a mile from all of the big homes where it's homes to homes to homes in my town. I just live eight tenths of a mile up a hill. And so I don't get broadband. And I've had, I've had four homes in my life, all pretty much in reasonably populated areas, and none of them, none of them had cable or, bro or, or DSL. So no broadband. Some of your earliest experiments were in homebrew audio, uh, allowing people to call into something. And here it looked like there might be some support for innovation in connecting VOIP with existing voice systems. Do you think that the protections expressed here will matter for unlocking innovation using VoIP and mobile? I'd love to answer that, but I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it seemed uh, like the Commission explicitly said that you can't uh, block VoIP from connecting to voice services or wireless, at least in the beginning of that there. Did you hear that? Is that uh, your takeaway? There's a no block on VoIP. Okay, no block on VoIP. No block on VoIP. Of course I'm for VoIP. You know, <laughs> VoIP, has taught us, VoIP has taught us like the Internet. I can send Internet messages to anybody I know in, in uh, Vienna, Austria. There's no extra charge for that. And yet when you go there with a cell phone, your data rate 
yeah, one one time I I had a seven thousand dollar bill after half a day in Germany. Hmm. What? I always have an international data plan. What happened? Well, it turns out that my carrier for my iPhone swiped my plan away when I bought a new iPhone. I have two unlimited international data plans on two iPhones. When I bought the new one, I, three times I went to AT&T store. I won't lose my plan. I wouldn't get my credit card in the Apple store until the salesman and the manager said I won't lose my plan. And two days later, I lost it. Like they thought they'd swipe back this valuable unlimited international data plan. You know, and they'll never take away the expensive one. Like, I wouldn't notice it, and I wonder how many people, I'll bet you a million people have lost plans that way and thought it was their fault when they found out months later. We have to continue outside the... Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry.